Matrix. You know, they gotta come on, they gotta watch the movie first and then take the red pill. Notice the pills are red and blue. Blue is yin, red is yang. Which one does he take? The red one. He's in yang, that's why he can come out of the Matrix. He's yin, he's in water, the tubes feed him, right? He doesn't do anything, just lays there. Yeah. I'll show you guys, when we get into this position, we tuck the pelvis, we have a much easier time stepping. So if you see from here, when I try to step out, there's tension back in here. When I release, take the tension off, straighten my lower back, then the leg can easily be moved. So when we disengage, disengage the largest yang muscle in the body, the gluteus, we can easily step out like that. And then all of the um, weight is on the quads. So this is what strengthens our quads. So the inside of the quad especially, which is the yin muscles, the yin meridians run through here. What they're doing is they're just, you know, feeling each other's energy sensitivity. I'm not a big fan of this because most of the time it ends up being you know, a struggle. One should be yang, one should be yin. That, that's not a struggle anymore. But in this case, it's both people are trying to win. Disbalance the other person. But with Tai Chi, you still got a huge amount of energy coming out, but without expenditure to lift the weights. But it's more efficient. Yeah. He also said mind-body, so there must be energy that engages the mind in that. Oh, which sure. weightlifting probably doesn't do as much. Sure. So what they're basically saying in a lot of these videos is that by doing Tai Chi, it leads to a quiet meditative moment. They never talk about balancing anything. So it needs to be a balance. Why do you do Tai Chi? Because I'm stressed. Okay, well then you're more Ya, you need to put more Yin into the mixture, and then you're going to get balanced. There's no mention of balance. A lot of these things don't mention balance, but that's the whole theory of Taoism is balance. So somebody who's more Yin, and they practice Tai Chi, it's going to make them poison. They're going to be poisoned with too much Yin. So what they need to do is to balance that out with you know, bike riding or kung fu or karate or wrestling or boxing or something that's very, very young in its nature. Even like getting a job that is very physical, like baking, yeah. you know, lifting heavy pots of you know, bread dough and things like that. It's something that's very, very physical. So, but people shy away from that. If they're more yin predominant, they want to just sit behind a desk and you know, give orders and you know, do the books. So that's... In order to balance, we need to do the opposite. So that's the, the sad thing. He just says it, it leads you to this. Well, how does it lead you to meditation? How does it lead you to a spiritual place? The way you led to a spiritual place is the balance. The Zhang Yang Zhu Dao, which in Chinese, the middle road. You know, after I worked in the bakery, I had more energy. It's like I didn't get much sleep. You know, I was working hard, but I felt in the bakery for the next couple of days. Well, here's the problem. A lot of our energy is stuck. That's what they call chi stagnation. So a lot of energy ends up being stuck, and what sticks it is stress. A lot of times stress will set up the mechanism to actually block. Stress almost acts like uh, flotsam, you know, and logs and, and branches and leaves floating down a river, and all of a sudden they'll get to a small little area, they'll block the flow of the river, and the river will slow way down. You know, a beaver dam, typical example. So what's happening is the stress is causing blockage, and when you're working hard like that, you're actually breaking those blockages. And it's really, really you know, good. It feels good. It's painful sometimes because when you break the blockages, it's painful. But after a couple of weeks, the same job you did was painful, and three weeks becomes fun. Yeah. Oh, like when you did the um, the uh, uh, acupuncture when you first did it, it was kind of a little bit painful, and you, you know. And then, but after a while, then when you turned it up, it felt good. Once the blockage is broken, then the cheese flowing. There's no more pain. So you can imagine. We don't know, but that riverbank could be screaming in pain, right? We don't, we don't have any way to measure that because of the blockage. And the riverbank's saying, you know, please, you know, send a storm, God, you know, and then the big storm comes and blows out all that stuff, and then the river flows again. So, you know, we, Gaia, the Earth, is like a living human mechanism in some ways, you know. I mean, it's, it, we are a microcosm of that macrocosm. And so they're the same rivers, and that's where the Chinese came up with Chinese medicine. Because they looked at the geography. So if this is all present in front of us, then our bodies, you know, mountains are like bones, you know. Valleys are like um, the uh, blood vessels and things like that. So, but that's the, that's the tragedy of this these videotapes is people don't really get the true nature of 
why would you study Tai Chi versus why would you go to the gym? So he doesn't explain that. So people are saying, oh, I just need to study Tai Chi. And then they do it and they don't feel good. Because they're yin, they're depressed. When they study Tai Chi, it's just going to make them more depressed and more yin. But they need, he needs to say, if you're depressed, you need to go into the gym. And what's the first thing they say when you're not feeling well? You know, like the breath exercise, you know, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. Those are all symptoms of depression and you know, the body being overstressed. Whole vegetarian diet for about a year, year and a half will completely cure all blockages in the body. So obviously he needs to take, take care of himself, not do a lot of physical exercise until the block should start to... Another one is natokinase, which is a really good uh, uh, vitamin made from soybean. Um, being an ACE, ASC is an enzyme that breaks down blood clots. So you know, when you have blockages, you have a ch chance to have a blood clot stuck. So you take the natokinase along with it, that's what I recommend. But just going on a vegetarian diet, they've completely reversed blockages in the arteries of the heart, legs, you know, arms, you know, whenever there was a blockage. So it's sad that he had got surgery because, you know, this case of, you know, it's very difficult to, you know, recover from surgery and then get infections and all kinds of other stuff. So hopefully he changed his diet too besides, you know, doing Tai Chi. They didn't mention about his diet, you know. No, that's, that's just funny. Well, that's a sad thing because diet is this kind of subject that not too many people want to talk about. <laughs> it's um, just not discussed. Really sad. And that's the number one thing, you know, what you put in your body is what you become. So. You saw the people working out in the, in the field, right? They're wearing regular clothes. Why are they always for TV or for whatever they wear the silk stuff? I have no clue. He should just be wearing what he normally wears. You know, like you could wear some Lululemons and a nice black shirt or something, you know? Something like that. But instead, they wear the silk pajamas. And it's like, why I worked out, I never once in China ever in a park, you were there. I don't know if you ever watched Tai Chi in the park, they never wear this stuff. Is that right? They don't even wear it in China. No. Yeah, I wrote an article about that and I got so many people slamming me. I said, what's the deal with these the people wearing these rubber soled, you know, black cloth shoes and all this stuff? They don't do that in China. You have to. They, they wore those in China under Mao Zedong because Mao didn't have enough money to make people good shoes, and so they made crap shoes. They used to call them wuxia, cloth shoes. I think I told you guys, my girlfriend. One time I walked out on the, uh, I was on a penthouse, I walked out just on the rest of the roof where other people could possibly see me from other apartments and she flipped out and dragged me back in the house and said, what's going on? She goes, don't ever wear those outside. I said, I'm just on my own roof. She said, I know, but somebody might look down. She said, that's so embarrassing for you to be wearing those. I don't want anybody to know you have those. She said, don't ever wear them out on the street, please. I'll lose big face in the community. I was like, okay. I thought they would be nice like the wooden floors. You know, those that cough. Uh... They would be, but the thing is, is that in China, they don't. They wear good tennis shoes, supportive, mm -hmm. well-made tennis shoes that they make. I see that. <laughs> so they would have been, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's scan still to this day. And then if you buy them in Chinatown, the ones that you know they they off gas so bad because they're using mm -hmm. cheap petroleum, they're horrible. I have a pair that still stinks. It's like almost 12 years old now. I bought them in Chinatown when I first came there, just for slippers, you know. But I could never wear them because they stunk so bad. They're still out gas. So. This kind of stuff, you know, I, it's like a football player puts on his football uniform, but you don't need that to get into the Tai Chi spirit, the Tai Chi you know, mindset, of course. But this is what people think. You get this is it. But it's, it's true that there is a big difference between pugilism, learning how to fight, and martial arts. You guys agree? Well, it's the same thing. Thank you for looking. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> we know what he's talking about. Does he, does he explain that? You're, you'll see. He, basically, he thinks that you know, he's right. But there is no difference between pugilism and martial arts. That's, you know, pugilism is basically using your hands, martial arts is using yeah. weapons and everything else. So he's talking about this violence. He's talking about you know, Tai Chi sword, Tai Chi staff, you know, let's, let's kick ass. That's what Chen style is all about. Whereas Yang style went more toward the the focus of, of developing the mind, the body, and the spirit. Truly developing those three, instead of just fighting all the time. Which are, and have been, historically, like calligraphy, and painting, and flower arranging. So he's saying martial arts is calligraphy, painting, and flower. He's talking about the samurai now, and now he's jumped from China to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so he's saying that, you know, 
This is what the samurai did. When did they do the calligraphy, the painting, and the flower arranging? They did it when they were off season, when they weren't fighting, which was most of the time. You know, the, the daimyo, the, the big director, ruler would say, hey, I gotta kick butt on this guy, he insulted me. Okay, let's get all the soldiers together, let's go kill him. Let's, let's take his castle. But two, three years, they might just sit and nothing to do. There was a lot of prostitution in there, there was a lot of eating in there, you know, drinking a lot, plus all this other stuff. So the samurai, the reason why they were able to enhance their, you know, uh, cultivate their artistic ability, because they had the time. Because why? They were getting a stipend every month from the, the ruler, you know, their lord. So, so I don't know where, where you get. <laughs> That's not martial arts. That, that was what they did in their off times. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, you take example of a puffer fish, right? It puffs itself up, you know, so you're doing all this kind of stuff with the guys. Like, I remember I was bouncing in a bar one night, and there's a small little guy getting confronted by a big, huge guy. And he just started doing all this Bruce Lee stuff. And every time the guy would get close, he'd rah, 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 he start doing Bruce Lee. And the guy would back up. And he did that about five times, and the big guy just said, ha, ha. He just started laughing at him, and he walked away. So it worked. He didn't ever fight, and I don't think he ever ever studied martial arts, but he was just jumping around like Bruce Lee, and the guy was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, a similar thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, a lot of this stuff, if you start doing that, you know, a guy's going to pull out a gun and shoot you, you know? It's better not to be in the confrontation altogether. How you do that? You're sensitive. You cross the street. You know, you see eight guys standing there, and they look like gangsters. You don't walk in between them. Even though that's your street, and you pay taxes, it's how people get hurt. I deserve to walk the money, you know? They own that. They own that territory. Right now. <laughs> yeah, so you just cross. <laughs> it's not your street. And if you think so, you're stupid. You know? So, anyway, I, I, just some ideas about you know, Tai Chi. I thought it might be interesting for you guys to see that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's do some more fun. She wasn't here when we were doing that, so. Let them know if he, you know, tries to go to yeah. anticipate or All right. no, if he lift his arm up, you stop, right? Yeah. Yeah, because he stopped. That's good. Okay. Because resistance is a 
type of force, you know? Right. People don't realize it's force going the opposite way. Right. People think of resistance as a self-defense, and it's actually force. So Taiji is no resistance. Good, where he had the other hand trying to touch her hand. So touch two points is better than one right, very good. Now he's stuck now. Yeah, it's good. 